Good evening and welcome to our midweek Bible moment here at the Fulton Church Christ. We appreciate you joining us here this afternoon as we uh, have our midweek Bible moment as we do every week uh, where we have a short devotional thought and any announcements that need to be made. Uh, as far as we usually do with our announcements, there's really not a whole lot to make. As you know, that we uh, weren't able to get our bulletin out this week and uh, we've not really had many updates to our sick or anything going on, but we'll go about the ones we always mention and that we do have. Uh, one, we need to remember those who've been snowed in and those those who are uh, without power and those who are having various needs. We know that there are some in our area who uh, are without power and that have been uh, stuck at home. And we pray that all of those uh, who are watching this are safe and they're doing well. And like I said, we're waiting now for uh, the second round to come in. And we hope that it's not uh, as bad as it possibly could be, uh, that things will, will go good, that uh, it won't... Uh, We'll be freed up in the coming days, but continue to pray for those that are snowed in, such as in Texas. Uh, we know there's a lot that are having uh, issues out in Texas with loss of power. Uh, a lot from our area, again, they're losing power in Alabama and other places. So uh, let's remember them in our prayers. Remember them as they go through this, and hopefully we can all get through the next few days so this uh, system can get out of here and we can uh, get back to uh, hopefully warmer weather. Uh, as far as our sick, uh, our sick to make mention of, uh, team member Brother Bruce Crosswhite, uh, he has some upcoming tests and some treatment uh, that he's waiting for. So remember him in your prayers. Uh, also remember uh, Brother Ray Justice. Uh, he's recovering from his eye surgery. Uh, everything seems to be going good with him. Uh, and so we're, we're thankful for that. But continue to remember him with his uh, other health issues. Uh, continue to remember Ashley Davis as she's undergoing her treatment. Let's pray everything continue to go well there. Uh, also continue to remember Randy Holly with his health issues. Then remember Sean Kane, uh, Penny Gray, and Linda Wagle Center as these are all battling with cancer and they've been asked to put on our prayer list. So uh, we want to make sure we mention those and we pray for those people. Uh, as far as our sympathy, you need to remember those we mentioned Sunday. Uh, and remember the families of David Smith and also Gary Klaus. Uh, he was uh, a cousin to a lot of the, uh, the couple members here. So uh, we uh, remember that family. I remember David as he was one of our members, our ex-members. So uh, we need to remember him and his family in our prayers as they uh, deal with this loss and they go forward. Um, Remember tonight, we will have our Zoom classes. We will continue to have a regular scheduled classes since we're doing virtual. Uh, we will have a Zoom class for our kids at 6 p.m. Uh, then at 7 p.m., we will have the adult class, and we'll be studying Exodus 22. Uh, we'll be looking at Exodus 22 to see some more of the law that God gave and what we can learn from that law. Uh, so remember that, and also remember on Monday night at 7 p.m., we have our teenage class, and appreciate those who've joined in, in with that. Appreciate those who've joined all of our Zoom classes and watched it online. Uh, we've had good turnout. So we've had a good, good participation and we're thankful uh, for this ability during this time when we've not been able to do in person uh, that we have been able to do these virtual and they've been a uh, fairly good success so far. Um, remember uh, the 21st so, uh, Century Global Missions class. I don't have an update for that. Uh, that typically meets on Thursdays. I do not believe they're going to have a class this week, uh, considering the road conditions. Uh, if you're interested in that class, you attend that class, I encourage you to uh, contact 21st Century before you go in tomorrow. Uh, but my guess is they probably won't have that class based on the weather uh, and road conditions. Uh, also remember that our uh, Facebook, our FBI classes have begun. Uh, they air every, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can go and watch those videos. We're in the third lesson so far. So I encourage you to come back and study with us. Uh, if you missed last semester and want to catch up, we're doing a survey of the Old Testament. Uh, you can go back to that uh, Facebook page or go to our YouTube page, uh, and you can find those videos back from Session 1 and catch all the way up to where we are now, and you'll be ready to go. Uh, and let's say Session 1 from last quarter. Uh, you can watch about the 14, 15 lessons uh, and see a survey of the Old Testament. A brief outline, a brief introduction to each book, and then an outline. I encourage you to get a chance to do that, to join in those classes. Uh, I know they will find them beneficial and helpful to you uh, as we study those. Um, that's all the announcements I have for tonight, and that's all that we uh, are aware of. Uh, as of right now, our plan is, like I say, to have a regular service on Sunday morning. Uh, we really see no reason why we wouldn't have that, but if there's something does come up and something changes in the weather, uh, we will notify you. Uh, but as of right now, everything is ready for Sunday morning. appreciate everyone's attendance and everyone being there. I encourage you to make plans to be there as usual uh, at 10 a.m. Also, remember, we stream that on YouTube and also on Facebook. For devotional tonight, I, I go to one of the verses that I, I want to talk about, one of the verses I always think about when these events happen, uh, and that is these, these winter events. Uh, there's, to me, no greater sight uh, than to wake up 
or to be awake and to see our yard, our woods, wherever we're at, be transformed from the green, brown colors it's been uh, the rest of the year to when it turns into white. Uh, that, that that beautiful thing, you know, typically we think about kids and being fascinated with snow, but uh, you'll see and you probably know that adults are just as fascinated with snow as kids are. We may not like to get out in it as much, uh, but we love to see it. And uh, those of us in the South, we love to see it, but we love to see it go too after just a, a day or so, uh, especially when you have something like this, we, we're getting sort of ready for it to return to normal. Uh, but as I thought about that, I thought about the, the, the beautiful sight we've seen for the last few days. Uh, you know, this started Monday, and now it's here on Wednesday, and it seems like Thursday it's going to still be here. Uh, that idea of being able to look outside and not see the normal, not see what we usually see outside, but to see that white, to see how everything changes. And, and there's no more, again, no more beautiful picture to me than that first view of that snow in the morning before anyone's disturbed it, before anyone's walked in it, anybody's dro driven in it, before anyone has disturbed it, but to see that perfect white snow cover the ground. And when I think about that, I always think about Isaiah. Uh, in the Bible, there are a few things, a few times that snow is mentioned. Uh, there's some mentioning of leprosy as being white as snow, but uh, one of the things that's uh, compared to snow that, that really sticks out to me is Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18 through 20 where Isaiah is speaking to the people of God. And again, we've talked about this on uh, in our FBI class. I think this next week we're going to talk about the book of Isaiah. Uh, the book of Isaiah and all the prophets, those prophets wrote not to create a new law, not to uh, create a new idea for people, but they wrote simply to call people back to God, to call people back to the law, to call people back to being God's people. And in writing that, they record the words of God. In Isaiah 1, verse 18, this is what God says. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white, as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will, you will be eaten by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God calls the people here in Isaiah and says, come, let us reason together. Let's talk together. Let us discuss what we need to do. And God says that though your sins be like scarlet, though your sins be red, a crimson, he says in just a minute, though your sins be crimson, a dark stain, a stain that's not easily covered up, God says they shall be white as snow. They shall become like wool. That's an amazing thought to think about. And again, we see that outside our door. To think about how, especially this time of year, we look out, we see a little bit of green, but mostly brown. And we see the deadness of the world around us in, in this winter time when most things die, when plants die off. Uh, and it's not as beautiful as it is in summer. To see that that death, that decay, uh, that, 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 that changing of the season, to see all that transform with snow cups. When that snow comes down and it coats it in that pure, luscious, beautiful white. And this is the image God wants us to see. Though he's speaking to Israel, he still makes his promise to us. That though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God says, I can take your sin. I can take your fault. I can take your mistakes. I can take all those things that stain you and make you worse and make you stand out, make you look against God, and I can make you white. I can make you pure. I can make you holy. Well, how does he do that? Well, notice verse 19 and 20. He said again in verse 18, come let us reason together. And then verse 19 and 20, he lays out the idea for us, the choice. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you're willing and you're obedient. Now, this is very interesting. God's not requiring anybody to serve him. God's not making anybody. When I say requiring, I mean making. God, the God's not forcing, I guess would be a better word, to make anybody work, follow him. He's not making you go against your free will, go against your own choice. But God says, if you're willing and you're obedient, if you obey my voice, you follow my plan, you follow my teaching, then you'll eat the good of the land. You'll be rewarded. You'll get the good of the land. Now, he's talking about the land of Israel, the land of Jerusalem. 
He says, you'll have the good of the land. You'll be blessed. You'll be satisfied. You'll be happy in that land. Now, remember, Israel's already in the land of, of Judah at this time. They've been here for centuries. But God says, if you'll come to me, if you'll obey with me, you'll continue to be blessed. You'll continue to be fruitful. He says, but if you refuse, if you refuse and you rebel against me, you turn against me, you're not going to eat the good of the land. You'll be eaten by the sword. You'll be devoured. You'll be refused. You'll be turned away. And he says, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You see, God tells Israel, you got a choice. you got a choice. Either follow me and I'll bless you. Or don't follow me and you'll be cursed. Follow me and you'll have the fruitfulness of the land. Don't follow me and you'll be punished. Someone else will come in and take this land from you. And what's interesting, what's scary about Isaiah is that within a few centuries of this, within a few years, I think it's two centuries of Isaiah writing this, Israel, the northern kingdom, well, even less than that, during Isaiah's time, Israel, the northern kingdom, is going to fall. They're going to fall to Assyria. And then a couple hundred years later, Judah, the southern kingdom, is going to fall to Babylon. Why do they fall? Because of their disobedience. Because God gave them a choice. Obey me and be blessed. Refuse me and be cursed. Obey me and become white as snow. Refuse me, be crimson and dirty, and be tossed away. And that's the same choice we have today. The same decision we have to make. Do we want to follow God, to obey Him, serve Him, live as He's called us to live so that He can bless us, He can reward us? He will give us that promise that he's promised to all of his faithful children. Or we can refuse him. We can turn against him. Refuse to obey him. Refuse to listen to him. And he says, I'll curse you. You'll suffer. That ultimate punishment is going to be the idea of hell. This morning or this afternoon, we stand at a crossroads. We stand at a choice. What shall we choose? Shall we be scarlet? Shall we be dirty because of our sins? Or can we be white as the snow outside our window? This evening, if you're not white as snow because you're not following God, you're not obeying Him, you're not willing and listening to Him, change your life so that you are. Take a lesson from the snow. See how the snow takes this, this dying, dead earth that's in the winter time that, that nothing's really growing, nothing's beautiful. It takes that dreary picture and makes it beautiful because it paints it from being brown and, and dirty to being white, to being pure. That's the thing God said he'll do for us if we're willing and we're obedient. Tonight, if you're not as white as snow, we encourage you to change your life so that you are. If you're not a Christian, we encourage you to become one by putting him on that water grave of baptism where he washes away your sins. He cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Then after that, you rise to walk a new life. A life in which we ought to be willing and we ought to be obedient to him. And that when we do live that life, he'll wash us clean. He'll make us right. But sometimes we'll suffer. Sometimes we'll mess up. Sometimes we will fail. And God says when that happens, when we become dirty again, all we've got to do is come back to him. Ask for his forgiveness and he'll wash us clean. He'll make us right. Oh, what a great God we have. Tonight, let us reason within ourselves and ask ourselves, am I covered in scarlet? Or am I white as snow? And if we're not white as snow, let us change our life so that we are. Appreciate you taking your time to be with us tonight as we have done this brief study. Uh, as we have uh, done this quick devotional thought, uh, we're going to end as we always do with our prayer. Uh, again, if there's anything you need, uh, please contact us and we'll do our best to, to take care of you and help you in any way we can. Uh, but if you would, bow with me. We'll have a word of prayer and then we'll be done for the evening. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, our loving, caring Father, we're thankful for all you've done for us. We're thankful for your uh, willingness to send your Son to this world to live and die for us, Father. We're thankful for that willingness to make us from scarlet and dirty and spotted to being clean and pure and white as snow. We're thankful for that ability, Father. We're thankful for that blessing. And we pray, Father, that you'd help us. May we all live and walk and act in such a way that we have that white snow alive. 
We pray now, Father, that you be with those we mentioned are sick, those who are not well. We pray, Father, that you be with this, those this time who are having difficulties because of these storms, those who are shut in at home, those who don't have power, don't have heat. We pray, Father, that you keep your hand upon them. May those crews working, may they be blessed, Father, and they be protected, that they will do what's needed to uh, help those to get back the, the power as quickly as possible and be able to uh, get the heat they need, Father, and pray that you look after us as we uh, prepare for the storms that are still coming, that may uh, everything go well there, Father, and pray that you look after us that the best will happen and uh, that the, the less, least amount of, uh, of hardship will come about from that father and just pray that you'd help us that we'll be able to recover from this storm father and be able to go forward soon we pray now father be at those that are they're hurting be at those that are suffering because of the virus look after them father and care for them as only you can uh, we pray father also that you continue to be with Russ crosswalk look after him with his uh, treatment and test father we pray that may everything continue to go well for him uh, be with ray justice father with his uh, surgeries and all that he has waiting him father may he continue to do well and have good health be with Ashley Davis and her treatments, Father. May they continue to do what they need to do. Uh, be with Randy Holly, Father, as he's receiving his care and all that's for him, that he'll be able to continue to have good health and good days, Father. Pray that you uh, continue to be with Sean Kane. Uh, look after him, Father. Uh, also be a Penny Gray and Linda Wago Center Fathers. They deal uh, with their cancer diagnosis and look after them, Father, and care for them as only you can. Again, Father, pray to be with all those that are sick and those that are not well. Be with those in nursing home and hospitals, Father, and assisted living. May they continue to get the care and the uh, and the. Uh, uh, be provided for Father as they need and just pray that you continue to help them to uh, live good lives Father and help them to uh, be the people you've called them to be and Father we pray that you be with those that are not the people you've called them to be be with those who are not white they are not white as snow Father they don't have those sins washed away that something be said or something done Father that will cause them to change their life and make their life, their life right before it's everlasting too late we pray now, Father, that you also be with those families that are suffering of loss of loved ones. Pray that you be with the family of David Smith and also of Gary Klaus, Father. Look after them. Care for them, Father, as only you can do. Uh, give them strength. Give them comfort these difficult moments. Again, Father, pray that you'd help us all to live lives that are right, that are holy before you. Help us always live, Father, in a way that shows your our obedience to you, Father, our following of your plan, that we'll be your children, Father. We can be those of white as snow, Father, and show that whiteness to those around us, Father, that they can see our different life and they'll want to come to know you as we do, Father. We again, Father, pray that you go with us and watch over us in all that we do. Care for us and uh, protect us, Father, in all that happens in this world. May you help us to be faithful and true to you. And pray, Father, that you'd help us and we'll live in such a way that one day we can have that home with you in heaven. And Father, we just ask all this in your precious Son's name. Amen. Again, I appreciate you joining us here tonight. Appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch this video. Remember, at 6 p.m., uh, for those with kids, we will have our Zoom Bible class from 6 to 6.45. Uh, we'll uh, continue our lesson there. The, the kids have had a great time with that. appreciate all the parents who are working to get their kids there uh, and make sure everything goes well. Uh, also, remember, at 7 p.m., we have our adult class. We'll be studying Exodus 22. I uh, appreciate if you get a chance to come out and uh, join us that. Uh, either join us on Zoom or join us Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we'd love to have you however you can be there uh, to study about God's great book. Uh, and then finally, remember Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We have our worship service. We're thankful for that ability we have. And pray that you'll continue to, to join us there. Uh, come out and see us as best you can. Uh, but uh, there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing else I have. I appreciate you being here. Uh, we hope that you're having a God-blessed day. We thank you for your attention. And we hope to see you all again very soon.